Lesson 6, Interference. In this lesson, we will talk about one of the most fundamental phenomena when it comes to waves, the interference. We will start by considering interference with normal uh, um, single frequency waves, when they superpose, what happens to them. Then we will move to interference of single photons, and we will conclude with interference of qubits. So let's begin. Step 1, constructive and destructive interference. Let's consider that we have a single frequency wave propagating in time. How do we write down a mathematical expression that describes the propagation of such a wave? Well, we do it as follows. We denote the wave with E, and it's some constant E0 times the sign of the following argument, where E0 designates the amplitude of oscillations. That means how far, the, how much the wave is disturbing. Omega is the angular frequency and it determines how quickly the wave is propagating in time. Time here is denoted by this small t. k is the wave number. It also is related to um, uh, how fast the wave is propagating as well. And in three dimensions, it also gives you the direction of propagation. However, here we're only considering propagation in one dimension, therefore it's just a number. And phi is called the initial phase. So omega, the angular frequency, is related to the period of oscillations as follows. Omega is equal to 2 pi over t, whereas k, the wave number, is related to the wavelength of the oscillations, and k is equal to 2 pi over lambda. So let's have a look at some examples. For example, if we freeze the wave in time, so we set time equals to zero, and for convenience we also set phi equals to zero, and we only vary k. The blue wave here is for k equals to one, whereas the orange one is for k equals to 0 0.5. And these two dots, the distance between them represents the wavelength of the wave. And as we said, uh, the wave number k is related to the wavelength. Uh, the larger the wave number is, the shorter the wavelength. So we see for k equals to 1, the wavelength is shorter than for the other wave where k equals to 0 0.5, represented over here. Now, let's consider what happens when we fix the wave number, but we vary the initial phase. The only thing that happens is that we shift uh, the wave along the x-axis. So really what we are doing, we are just translating the wave a little bit by this angle, the, by this initial phase phi. So in this case, we have shifted uh, the two waves by um, initial phase of pi over 2. But this doesn't really affect mm, how fast uh, the wave is propagating, or it doesn't affect its, um, um, uh, its uh, wavelength. So finally, let's add time, time dependence into the picture. We set k equals to 1, and we also set the initial phase phi to be 0. And now the wave is actually propagating in time. Here we have two waves again. For the first wave, represented by the blue, we have uh, omega equals to 0 0.1, whereas for the second wave, we've got 0 0.2. Remember, we said that omega determines how fast the wave is uh, propagating in time. And we can clearly see that the orange wave is faster than the blue wave. So now, let's consider two waves that are actually interacting together and creating a new third wave. How do we, how do we describe this new disturbance? So let's say that we've got two waves, E1 and E2, each with different uh, amplitude, same frequency, and we grouped uh, the spatial, depend spatial variation into these uh, factors alpha, alpha 1 and alpha 2. And to get this new wave that E1 and E2 produce is actually very relatively simple. You just uh, add them together. And this is known as uh, the principle of superposition. And the idea is that we are 
looking for a description of the new resultant wave also in this form, where now we have to find out what is this new amplitude, E0, in terms of, uh, in terms of the um, uh, uh, composite waves. And also we want to find out this new factor of alpha. So let's see how we can do that. What we do is we just add the two waves together and we begin by expanding these signs. So the first wave can be written as this. We have the uh, initial amplitude of the first wave, E01, and then we've got sine omega t times cos alpha uh, 1 plus cos omega t times sine alpha 1. And similarly for the second wave. So we add them together, and now what we do is we group the time-dependent terms. So we see that these two terms, they both vary in time as sine omega t, whereas these two terms vary as cos omega t. So let's group them together, and we get the following expression. We've got some spatial, spatial variation here, times sine omega t, and another spatial variation here, times cos omega t. And what we can do now is we can define E0 cos alpha as this whole first expression, and E0 sine alpha as the second expression. And now, with a little bit of algebra, what we arrive at is, are the following expressions. So, if we square this first expression and add it to the square of the second expression, cos squared alpha plus sine squared alpha is equal to 1. That's a very important trigonometric identity. So, on this side, we get E0 squared. And then, we just have the squares, which we have expanded over here and simplified with some trigonometric identities. Also, if we take this uh, orange expression, the second expression over here, and we divide by this blue expression over here, we can get an expression for tangent of alpha given as this following ratio. And this is our new wave. So, we started with two waves with same frequencies, which means that uh, the resultant disturbance also uh, travels at the same frequency, which makes sense. But this new wave has different amplitude and also different phase. So let's look at some examples. But before that, actually, let's look at the, let's look at the amplitude of this superposition. So we've got the amplitude squared is equal to the sum of the squares of the component amplitudes, which makes sense. But then there is this extra term, and this extra term is very important. It's called the interference term. You can see that it actually uh, oscillates as a result of the difference between alpha 2 and alpha 1. And this, this difference is called the phase difference. So the entire expression for E0 squared is maximized when delta is either 0 or multiples of 2 pi. And we call this constructive interference because it's adding uh, to the new resultant uh, amplitude. On the other hand, if the phase difference is an uh, uh, integer multiple of pi, as plus or minus pi or plus or minus 3 pi, then what we get is destructive interference because this interference term over here is minimized. So let's look at some examples. We've got two waves. We set their amplitudes to be equal for convenience. Both are 1. Their omegas are the same, 0.1. And the only thing that is different between them are the uh, wave numbers k. For the first wave, k equals 1. For the second wave, k equals 0.8. So we add the two together, and what we get is the following. Here, with these blue and uh, orange waves, we see the waves traveling independently, whereas the green wave is the superposition of these two waves. And you can see the interference at play. At the beginning, over here, where x is small in this region, the waves travel in such a way that the crest seems to be on top of the crest of the other wave. Therefore, we get constructive uh, interference. The waves are reinforcing each other, they're adding together, producing something larger. Whereas, as the wave propagates into this uh, region of larger x, they are propagating at different speed. So what happens, they go out of phase. So the crest of one wave is meeting the trough of the other wave. So they are destructively interfering and they're cancelling each other out. And you can see that uh, in this green wave where the amplitude becomes very, very low, nearly zero.
And that's how interference works.